Our talks, has Mr Biden said, relayed the proposal to Hamas. It's time to begin this new stage. For the hostages to come home, for Israel to be secure, for the suffering to stop. It's time for this war to end. For the day after to begin. That day after cannot come too soon for the Israeli hostages still held in Gaza and the Palestinians still trapped by a conflict that has brought untold suffering. Fiona Mitchell, RTE News. Donald Trump has said he'll appeal the guilty verdicts reached in his hush money trial after becoming the first ever US president to get a criminal conviction. In the news conference this afternoon, Mr. Trump criticized the judge and denounced the trial as a scam, claiming it was rigged. The headlines on the New York newspapers said it all, guilty and injustice. The political division continues even after a conviction in court. Trump's taking those regulations off the backs of those corporations. Sounds like a good idea to me. Outside the Trump Tower, supporters of the 45th president gathered to show support, but there were opponents too. Inside, Donald Trump was giving a long, rambling press statement that rehearsed all of his usual lines about rigged court cases, corrupt and conflicted judges, and all of it orchestrated by Joe Biden. So I'm the leading person for president, and I'm under a gag order by a man that can't put two sentences together, given by a court, and they are in total conjunction with the White House and the DOJ, just so you understand. This is all done by Biden and his people. Maybe his people, more importantly, I don't know if Biden knows too much about it, because I don't know if he knows about anything. But he's nevertheless the president, so we have to use his name. And this is done by Washington, and nobody's ever seen anything like it. There were no questions, just a speech. He claimed to have raised $39 million in donations overnight from outraged supporters and vowed to fight on, saying November 5th, is the most important date in American history, polling day for the presidency. And Sean joins us now from Washington. Well, co contrasting contributions from the two men likely to be facing that poll on November 5th. Um, Sean, if, if people thought Mr. Trump would be cowed uh, by this verdict, uh, would you say he came out fighting in his press conference this evening? Well, yes, he did, Ray, but it was very much in the style that we've seen uh, over the past year, certainly, and probably even the past two years of the uh, Trump uh, pre uh, presidential bid. Uh, he's been criticizing the courts. He's been criticizing Joe Biden, criticizing everybody, really, uh, including the jury in New York. And that contrast today, the very first thing that Joe Biden did was to uh, address the uh, uh, issue of the conviction of Donald Trump and uh, point out that slagging off the court system in America, the jury system, he said was foolish and dangerous. Uh, he said it was the cornerstone of American democracy that was being attacked. And that was very much setting up that contrast in styles and indeed in substance between what Donald Trump was saying this morning and what President Biden was saying this afternoon. And then, of course, he went on uh, to look, I guess, presidential by dealing with this uh, issue of the Middle Eastern uh, peace process, unveiling that peace plan, very much laying the pressure on Hamas, putting it up to them to accept it, saying this is an Israeli proposal, doesn't meet everything that Israel wanted to get out of this situation, notably the things that Prime Minister Netanyahu has been saying over the past two weeks on television interviews here in the United States, that he wants to see Hamas absolutely and utterly destroyed, and that if some Hamas survives this period, then just surviving will be victory for them. It doesn't give uh, Israel that out and out victory. Uh, it does offer a survival route for Hamas, but the president is saying to Hamas, take this deal. This is a good deal. It's the best one you're going to get, putting the pressure onto them. But of course, we know from our own Irish peace process that just because the United States government is trying to pressurize people into taking deals doesn't mean that they're going to take them. Nevertheless, this is probably the biggest development that we've seen in the Gaza conflict for the past six months. Right? Yes, yes, indeed. Sean in Washington, thank you.